So we are live now on Facebook. So good afternoon and welcome everyone to the Thai Kolkata Star Speaks event today. I'm Sadia Azim, the executive director at the Thai Kolkata chapter. Uh, Star Speaks is Thai Kolkata chapter's uh, monthly event where we invite experts to throw light on specific subjects of their expertise for our audience to learn, relate, and develop. Uh, for those of you who might not know that since 1992, Thai, the Indus entrepreneurs have been supporting entrepreneurs of, by offering education, mentorship, networking, and funding opportunities. The mission of Thai remains to foster entrepreneurship globally through funding, uh, mentoring, networking, and education. Thai Global is the largest nonprofit organization of entrepreneurs and have 61 chapters across the globe. There are 19 of its chapters in India. Thai connects the entire entrepreneurship ecosystem from early stage entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs, professionals at leading corporations, venture capitalists, angel investors, thought leaders, among others. Thai Kolkata is one of the growing chapters across the vast Thai network. In the last 20 years, it has continuously taken leaps and hopes to build on a positive ecosystem for the entrepreneurs and investors in the region. If you want to know more about us, that is Thai Kolkata chapter, please visit us on our website, kolkata.thai.org, or write to us on uh, info at the red kolkata.thai.org. Our star speaker today is Mr. Vivek Bajaj, the co-founder of StockEdge and elearnmarket.com. Uh, Vivek is the co-founder of Credent InfoEdge, an enterprise involved in simplifying finance for everyone. He has over 20 years of experience in the financial market. He's a chartered accountant, company secretary, and MBA from IIM Indore. He is passionate about data, technology, and education. He has been involved in empowering people with the right learning and analytics in finance through his online ventures. Today, elearnmarkets.com has over 1 million learners and StockEdge has over 2.5 million downloads. His investors in this venture include Mr. Ramesh Damani, Mr. Dinesh Agarwal of India Mart, Mr. Ajay Sharma, the hedge fund manager, Samyakt Capital and others. He has recently raised capital from Kotak Securities uh, for these ven growth ventures. A moderator for the event is our esteemed chartered member, charter member, Mr. Abhishek Rumta. He, in his own capacity, is a well-known entrepreneur, an angel investor, and a visionary. He's the founder and CEO of uh, Indus Net Technology, a technology guy who turned entrepreneur in his teens. Abhishek Rumta's Indus Net Technology is a fully bootstrapped venture from one person to a family of 750 plus uh, professionals who work from India, UK, US, Singapore, Canada, Brazil, and several others. Abhishek's expertise across technology and marketing gives him the unique ability to synergize systems with business, ensuring high success rate of innovation and change management initiatives. With this, may I welcome our speaker, Vivek Bajaj, and our moderator, Abhishek Rungta, to take on the screen. Over to you, Mr. Rungta. Uh, thank you, Sadia ji. Uh... Hi, Vivek. Uh, thanks for being here and giving me this opportunity to moderate this session. Uh, because, you know, talking to someone like you who have been building such an amazing business, right? It itself is a privilege hosting you on this show. And uh, thanks for being there. And I, I'm, I'm saying that because I'm not only, I know you for some time, but I'm also user of your products. And I've already told you how I have benefited from your product. So I think it's a wonderful product. And, uh, but today our objective is a little different. Um, today we will talk a little bit going on the business strategy side, you know, where we'll talk about, uh, you know, the competitive edge. So a lot of time people are talking about business edge. How do you create business edge, competitive edge? Uh, and, uh, and I would love to learn from you and your story and your background of how, uh, you know, uh, you have created business edge, how you have maintained it, how you have changed your directions from time to time. I think this would be a wonderful learning for everybody who's out there, who's trying to build a, uh, build a company from Kolkata. 
uh, and obviously we will then get into some nitty gritty and questions here and there and we will also take some questions from the audience uh, towards the end. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, just just for everybody, buddy, you know. So Vivek has been a, a wonderful entrepreneur, uh, also an inspiration for many, including me. Uh, I have been watching him from the sidelines, building a company you know, from ground up. I have seen Elon, the, the you know the birth of Elon Market. I have seen the birth of Stock Edge. How these products have kind of uh, become the stellar products in the in the Indian ecosystem. And, uh, and how these products have started monetizing and also became a profitable startup. Uh, you know, I've also seen Vivek's journey from a bootstrapped company to a now a well-funded company and possibly going to the next level altogether. So there's a lot to grab from him, right? And, and how he has converted his aspirations to success here. Uh, so, uh, and I'm sure this is, I, I, I'm, I'm using the word success Vivek with all responsibility that this is just the beginning of your journey, right? There's a lot more to come and we are cheering for you. So uh, with that, Vivek, why don't we start with, you know, you giving a little bit of a background about StockEdge and how this whole idea came to you. How did you start it off and uh, where this journey began? Sure. Uh, so Abhishek, let me first thank uh, you and it's a privilege to be on the same frame. We all know you very well and we all know that how inspiring you are. Uh, we have just come into this ecosystem, but you are literally the creator of the ecosystem. So we'll talk about it later in detail when I get an opportunity to do a fire chat with you in my channel. Uh, and uh, obviously it's a pleasure to share, share the left side of the frame where Mr. Sanjeev Birchandani was there a few days ago. So it's such a, such a lovely feeling to be there uh, and talk to you about whatever limited thing I've done. So Elon Markets and Stockage is, is kind of a passion which started with the objective of giving back to society. Um, uh, Abhishek, I started uh, the journey of financial market, you know, we literally studied together in college and uh, you took that path of new internet businesses and I took the path of financial market because of the respective backgrounds, I guess. Uh, so uh, financial market came very natural inside my blood because I'm a third generation financial market guy. So it was a natural calling for me to get into it, explore new ways of doing things in market. So uh, after my CA and MBA from IIM Indore, I, I thought that let me start on my own. I worked in Bombay for some time as an analyst and then I came back to Calcutta and started my own commodities venture. Uh, 2006, 7, 8 was the great period for traders in the market. Whoever was there in financial market knows how easy it was to make money. And people have tested the same thing in the last 15 months that it's just the press of a button and you get a lot of money easily. It's an ATM machine right now. Not yeah. probably in future anymore, but it was for the last 15 minutes, uh, 15 months. So 2006, 7, 8 was pretty much the same. And I was fortunate to be there doing the right thing at the right time. And then uh, uh, because the capital base was then there, it was easier for me to expand to other areas. So I would say that I was lucky that uh, I, I, I was able to capitalize this company which has Elon Markets and Stockage, which is Credit Info Edge in 2013, uh, because I already had a capital. So it was easier for me to bootstrap these ventures. Uh, the, the idea was that uh, after a fair bit of work as a trader, it, it's a quite an intense occupation, uh, trading the market from morning to the night. And I was a commodity currency trader, so I used to trade till 11.30 in the night, which was quite a gruesome exercise, but it used to be fun for me. I used to enjoy it so much. But 2013, I got slightly, I would say, burned out. And I, I thought that, let me just think about what value added I can give to society, not just doing trading and making money for myself. So that's how the journey, the quest of figuring out what to do. And I did a lot of programs, I attended, uh, I read a lot of books. So I got through a book called Bloomberg by Bloomberg which is a basically a autobiography written by Michael Bloomberg on himself. And I got so impressed with his profile, with the way he built his business. Uh, at the age of 39, after he was asked to leave from Solomon, he started Bloomberg and he, he went ahead and got into the idea of democratizing financial data for institutional investors. And he did fantastic work. So it instantly clicked my mind that retail investors in India uh, they are at a disadvantage because they don't have access to data, information. Most of them have no knowledge about the market. In fact, uh, the top top of the top funnel of our society, they have no least understanding about financial market. Forget about the guys who are at the bottom of the pyramid. 
so uh, that's that's what we thought that chalo we got a good objective of doing something in life so 2039 we started this initiative of democratizing financial market and elon markets was the first product which was the first stage of financial market learning engagement for any investor then stockage the second product which was giving access to data and unbiased analytics uh, to retail investors particularly people who value analytics and who want to take things in their own own, own command for example you now last time we had a conversation and you said that i love to do things on my own because i feel that this is in my control so stockage became that uh, you know me to uh, immediate uh, tool where people who want to do things on their own they they got access to and then we are building more products so this entire ecosystem is basically now a parallel ecosystem which is running in the industry so an industry which was largely dominated by intermediaries with like brokers or or media for that matter uh, so you know it's like a train track where one track is there already been serving the retail investors for last 20 25 years and this new ecosystem new track which has emerged which is people like us who are sitting on top of the intermediaries and making sure that the retail investors who are coming on board into the system get the right understanding of the subject and that le- should lead to a long term wealth creation not just a uh, full day trading which typically a lot of people are is- resorting right now but hopefully we will be able to train people to give them good data analytics so that they become independent and get into a long term wealth creation mode so my my whole journey has been financial market financial market but that has also evolved uh, started as a chartered accountant uh, got got into a job somewhere and then now very active on social media developing content which i love to develop for retail investors yeah and financial market itself is a huge segment so there will be various flavors of it just like it so uh, i mean i think uh, you have chosen a very interesting area of financial market which is now coming very much on the limelight mm-hmm. uh, with uh, lots of applications because people are now becoming investors on their own right uh, i mean today morning itself you know um, i got an account opened for my dad on zerodha and now he doesn't even want to call the broker yeah. so uh, he says that you know if i can buy it myself why do i call a broker to buy it so i think people will become more and more independent mm-hmm. and in that case your education venture where you are trying to give data and education mm-hmm. on financial markets has a huge uptick possible uh, in days to come true so, true so uh, so uh, you know uh, going ahead uh, vivek what do you consider as the as the key edge uh, of your business that makes you stand out Uh, in in the whole crowd like i think there are many companies who are trying to do that right there are companies who will try to put some data about some stocks online they think that they will become rich and famous unfortunately they end up resorting to just advertising revenue uh, i mean whereas you have created a model where you have been able to generate revenue for access to the same information which anyways is available in the public domain mm-hmm. but you are kind of making it look so nice and not only look nice but analytical and give you insights from that data mm-hmm. that i mean you 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 know after analyzing multiple products you wish to buy that product yeah. and then use that product so tell me a little bit what is that edge that has got you here so uh, you know just to reply to the point that uh, so people don't pay for data and particularly in india i think building a business model where you ask people to pay for data just because you have presented a data in a better manner is is not a sustainable model and we never thought that we'll ask people to pay for data in fact someone told asked me that you know what have you done not a big deal i mean there are so much information available in multiple websites all you have done is bring everything together in a one nice u- user flow so that's not a big deal and i said to them that that's a big deal that bringing everything together in an api environment and giving you that single experience is a big deal but then still people will not pay for that people will pay for value added analytics which should facilitate decision making now if my application can help you to take a decision that abhishek buy this share or this share is not the right one for you or based on your risk appetite this is the portfolio which you should build which should be more algorithm oriented that is a real value addition which i will give uh, give to you uh, the industry has evolved so historically brokers used to do this if you remember old school brokers uh, who used who were responsible to give you trading platform Uh, to research ideas to train you etc everything was done by broker and that one brokerage cost was kind of their way to recover the cost but now all the services of a broker is getting broken the transaction service is going to zerodha but zerodha will not give you 
training Zeruda will not give you. They will ask you, come read Zeruda Varsity and learn whatever you want to learn. I'm not responsible to make you a better trader. But there will be new set of players like mine who will sit on top of all these discount brokers and start giving value added uh, services to people like your father who at some point of time will either see TV or he will also open stockage app and see that which stock probably is the one which I should focus on. Otherwise he will get lost in that terminal and the terminal will entice him to trade a lot which is not the core idea of his presence, right? Right. Now, what is the edge which we have created? Why, why, why we are different is first of all we have a domain expertise. Uh, if you consider the other competitors which we have, typically there are people from tech background, and yes, they understand the UI well, they understand the data well, but they don't understand market well. And because we have been in the market, uh, we have seen what really works in the market over a period of 15 to 20 years. For us to give a ready-made solution to the investor is far more uh, easier and effective. So our domain expertise has come very handy. Second, uh, we believe that the work which we are doing has massive scope of expansion. Because finance is such a subject where uh, both vertically as well as horizontally you can expand. You can go so deep in even a thing like equity investment. You can go deeper and deeper and deeper or you can expand your horizon in non other financial assets both on the education side as well as on the data and analytics side. And third is uh, why we are different is that we are we have created this integrated solution uh, framework where that four stage journey of an investor right from learn, data, analytics, collaboration uh, through social platform and then finally transact. So there are uh, products who are focusing on only one aspect and yes uh, they will add that value addition to that user. But what we have done is created that integrated framework. By doing that, we get more insight about a user. So if you are coming to my eLearn platform, we know you want to learn these things. If you are coming to Stockage, we know you are a person who likes to see Reliance, who doesn't like to see a small cap, mid cap stock. If you are participating in discussion in our social forum, Stockage Social, we know that uh, you love to discuss about trading. You don't want to discuss about investing. The more you use our ecosystem products, the better we know you and then our algorithms in future will be able to give you a better recommendation engine. So, sure. and you know in financial market, uh, there is a saying that winner can't take it all because every uh, value added service provider adds something unique and people who want to subscribe to that unique will have to pay because that unique thing is available in only that service provider. Classic case is Bloomberg. Bloomberg costs around one and a half lakh a month. But wow. people who subscribe to Bloomberg, they subscribe to Bloomberg because they know there are certain things which is only in Bloomberg, which is proprietary and which they have built because of the scale which they have attained, which no one other can give. So people who are used to it, they will always subscribe year on year. So stockage is gradually becoming that tool, which is like something which people who are using it, they can't live without it because it is helping them to take that decision of making money. So Vivek, are you also having proprietary tools inside your product and proprietary data points and, you know, mashing up data with some proprietary source of information, which makes it so unique uh, and gives you that business edge that other people will have to, uh, you know, work very hard to achieve or they may not be able to achieve. Absolutely. So last couple of years, we're more focused on data capturing, cleaning that data. You know, in India, quality of data is so pathetic. A uh, lot of effort is, is has been gone in implementing AI, machine learning and even the manual process of cleaning that data which we were getting. And now we know that our database is very robust. I mean, you can compare our data with any other data of any vendor, you'll see us to be a superior data quality. From here now analytics, which is more proprietary in nature, they will start getting immersed. So in last one year, we have put a lot of energy in developing algorithms our own proprietary indicators, which will give clear signals to investors. Something like what to buy, what to sell tomorrow, what to buy, what to sell for a 10 year, uh, for a 10 day, 20 day, what kind of investment basket I'm interested in, what is the portfolio of top 300 investors of, of India. All these are high end, you know, premium analytics, uh, which is very reasonably cost. Uh, but these are adding real value and people will only come to us, pay to us because they see value in those outputs uh, for their decision making. And that's happening. 
So when you talk about, you know, building this business edges that you have built over time, like how do you retain them? Again, because building is one thing, right? And anything that you build today continuously decay. We know that from our uh, learnings over years now that, you know, nothing is permanent, right? Yeah. So how do you ensure that what you have built either stays as a competitive edge or you keep building new competitive edge uh, to stay relevant in this business? So Abhishek, uh, you know the answer of that question. But uh, I'm, I'm asking you. you. Yes, you <laughs> want me to answer that question. In fact, uh, you are the best person to answer that question. So b based on my experience of market, I can tell you that three years is the time frame when we have seen that every three year, the entire product UI, product backend, product uh, content, everything will change. Uh, and we will have to continuously evolve. But the beauty is, Abhishek, that it acts like a step. So once you have reached here, the next level change which will, will, you will do will be very, very good. And that will give you another next level of, you know, moat, which the guy who is starting will not realize that he has already reached that step three and it will take time for me to reach to step three. Mm -hmm. Not in terms of product, but in terms of experience of running that business and the product. So can I also derive from this Vivek that it is very important that you build and release products fast so that you can take the next step change instead of waiting to make the ultimate product in the world. Yeah, that yeah. is something which we have also learned hard way over the last five, six years that yeah, it, it can't be an eternity that you keep on developing one product. I think the new way of living is just get into the market with a bare minimum utility product let it get evolved as the market matures and anyways you know that after two two and a half years you will have to be prepared for the next product so Vic, uh, now getting getting a little bit on in generic strategy not necessarily just stockage mm. what do you believe in do you believe in a horizontal integration strategy or more of vertical integration so for example if i look at zerodha right mm. so they started with a trading platform then they added a university now they are adding ticker tape which is the data analytics platform I mean, similar to what you are doing, obviously I'm not comparing them, yeah. but now they are going to add other products, you know, now they are also expanding onto other financial products. So that is one strategy overall, right? You are going deep and deep into uh, analytics and uh, intelligence, right? That is one strategy. So what what strategy do you believe in, in terms of building an organization and, and why? So Abhishek, we have evolved as an enterprise from being a service company where we used to train people on markets to a product company where we develop these products. Now we are becoming a platform company because that's how the entire ecosystem is evolving. So being a platform, uh, you have to grow like this because you have to continuously add more uh, features, more products because the change, the preferences are changing, the market ecosystem, which is the structure of the market is changing. So tomorrow I have to get into algo trading. I can't say that, no, 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 that is not my domain. No, because your product needs algo because your next level client has already moved to algo. And if you want that client to be there with you, you have to forward integrate. So in financial market, particularly this happens because that funnel of financial market is so clearly defined that there will be first timers, there will be active investors who will trade probably once in six months and there will be active traders who trade every month and that funnel is getting expanded like this. So if you have to cater to that expanding funnel, then obviously uh, we will have to continuously add new things by forward integration. So Vic, uh, looks like we are getting too technically deep into financial markets. So coming out of that, uh, tell me what, how, how, I mean, you have built a service business, then you built a product. Now you are getting into a platform business. Hmm. Uh, forgetting that it is about financial market. Think about any business, right? How has your thinking process changed to make the such transitions? over a period of time because you have successfully made those transitions right yeah. and now uh, obviously it needs very different mindset so your way of thinking changes right mm. uh, if it doesn't change you cannot make such transitions so what needs to come into your mind how do you change your mind and how your thinking evolves kind of get there uh, abhishek uh, you know that business environment has become so dynamic uh, we never thought what covid would have done to all of us Mm -hmm. uh, forget about the negative side, but look at what COVID has done in terms of digital penetration. And it just came so fast. Uh, uh, till last year, no one was thinking about, you know, you remember YouTube was giving that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, yeah. 
recognition yeah. after yeah. you reach 1 lakh subscriber yeah. and today if you launch a youtube channel you probably will reach 1 lakh subscriber in 4 5 months so even youtube has changed the strategy they are saying that okay if you want then apply otherwise earlier they used to send it so <laughs> the everything has become so dynamic so tech oriented that adapting to the new environment has become a challenge no doubt about it so you need to be there constantly uh, uh, in in terms of being there uh, looking out for new ways of looking doing at things and it's not humanly possible for all of us to continuously evolve uh, on an individual capacity so one has to be surrounded by right team members who will take you to the next level otherwise uh, you know it's it's so difficult to motivate and keep on doing things which you can do go to the next level after a point of time you feel tired that how many things i will do but finally when you see that your team member is asking you to do it because that will help the entire ecosystem which you have built then you tend to do it so surround yourself with the right team member better than you and they will take you to the next level but, but just just again trying to get a little bit more out of you uh -huh. is uh, uh, how does your thinking process change from being a service company owner to a product company owner? Yeah. What do you find as a change in your mind, in your thinking way, process? So service company is more uh, person driven. Like I, I am there. So a lot of people would love to consume my service because they have confidence in me. Ki, Sir, hai toh, you know, things will be fine. Well, as product is extremely uh, systematic oriented and your product should do the talking itself rather than uh, the customer coming to you and say that your product has this, this problem. So preemptive what the customer would need and incorporating in the product as fast as possible. That is something which which is more required in our, I mean, in case of financial market, I can say, because we don't want customer to come to us because we, are, we can't serve every customer because the scale is so huge. We have almost uh, two and a half million register users. So if, uh, if some of them start coming to us that this product has this, this product has this, you should develop this, then we'll go mad. So I think it's more of creating that processes and let the product itself gauge what the customer need, will need and evolve the product rather than getting involved in the customer at a micro level. And now when you move from product to platform, this means somewhere you will also open up from for people to connect to other people on your platform. This means yeah. you have to bring a lot of governance, you have to bring a lot of uh, control structure in the place. Uh, but without, uh, you know, without looking bullish, yeah. right? without looking someone who's bullying people, right? So how do you, how are you changing your organization to do that? Uh, this is a mindset change, which we are still evolving. Frankly speaking, I think we are at the stage where uh, Elon markets has become a platform now. So we have okay. started onboarding external uh, authors who are giving their content. In fact, we have more than 200 external authors who have given oh. content. So these guys uh, have trusted us because they have seen the initial work which we have done. Obviously, there are a lot of people who don't uh, want to put their content because they believe that we are competitors. So from a captive content company to a platform, that transition will need a lot of faith to be resorted to these contributors. And the team has been trained in such a way that they have to give that comfort. We have to put an extra effort to make sure that people start perceiving you to be a platform rather than just a content creator and stockage social uh, which we are we are developing we're still in the early stage so we have opened it up for our premium customers right now uh, they are uh, you know hand holding the customer and taking care of their needs so it's still a i would say still a product which is evolving to platform so but yes once we open it to platform i think more relationship management from external for with external parties both side of the one customer and now, now the contributors uh, because contributors will lead to a platform becoming successful. Otherwise, you, uh, you still become a product. So we, we are trying to get into that zone. So we will need a little bit of a bit of excitement here, Vivek. So I will ask you a question. If you have the data, please share with us. Yeah. What is your daily active user numbers? Uh, daily active users uh, would be around, say, 400,000. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. 400,000 daily active users is a big responsibility. Yeah, so I think yeah. it's, a, it's a great testament of your resilience and what we have you have done out of Kolkata. Now, since we have used the word Kolkata, I would like to ask you, a lot of people say, you know, the location as a location, Kolkata at times can uh, be counter, uh, you know, intuitive in terms of a business edge. It does not look like a business edge. Yeah. Do you think Kolkata can be used as a business edge, as a location, as a geography? 
so we we started with that thought process that kolkata has a tremendous edge of uh, uh, you know reasonable cost good talent ultimately most of the talents are going outside calcutta so having them stay here and work with us it has worked fine for us uh, but yes uh, see every 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 city every region has its own core competence and i think we can reach to this level with kolkata base and we are very fortunate that covid happened and now we can have anyone why just in kolkata or bangalore or bombay we we are we are figuring out to work with people outside india who are best in what they do and they work remotely with us so i think the advantage is huge i mean been from kolkata it really have we have a control on the ecosystem so it really help us to live a better life and better access to the manpower but the disadvantage is we all know that of course there is a brain drain from our city and it's very difficult to bring people back once they have settled outside uh, but with online i think uh, this problem is mar- getting marginalized uh, and we are getting access to better talents uh, outside calcutta so uh, vic uh, now uh obviously this business which has built been built over years now uh, it must have changed over time right it must have taken pivots right so what has been your key pivot moments over last uh, you know the the whole journey that you have built and yeah. what were your key learnings from those pivot moments when it was like life changing you know maybe the company would die the company would succeed i'm sure all of us go through that time right uh, and you must have also gone through it i'm sure and then you must have taken a decision that have changed the path of the company have made the company much more successful than it was before right it could have gone either ways we would love to hear two three such incidents uh, such experiences near death experience of the business where you have changed the uh, you know the 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 trajectory of the company and made it what it is today okay so uh, you know abhishek let me just uh, answer this question by you know showing you the trajectory of the career and companies which has been built in the inside this career because for me crane info is just is a new baby but i have been building a couple of businesses with some co-founders lovely co-founders in this domain of financial market and that's probably the advantage also that once you are into a domain it's easier to uh, spread in other areas of the same domain with good quality co-founders i think the first uh, stage was that in 2000 and as i said 2006 7 8 was a golden period for making money but 2008 uh, sebi they allowed algo trading in india which is automatic robot trading now it was a challenge for me because i am a chartered accountant i don't understand technology much so 2009 there was a placid need of adopting technology right so there are two things either you work with vendors and in financial market after a point of time uh, especially in trading which is extremely uh, technology heavy technology hungry you do want to work with vendor after a point of time you have should have your own team because technology becomes the differentiator so 2009 i get into the path of identifying right uh, partners because i strongly believe that if you have good partners the business will grow uh, it can't be just through you know team under you you have to have the like minded partners along in your business so i connected with few people on linkedin i i said so much lot of time on linkedin just to and that time in 2009 we are talking ki koi to mil jaye who wants to share the similar passion with me and i got through someone then i got through someone through someone's reference and i figured out that both these people are from the same college and they want to do similar kind of a work i connected with them we i, I still remember that flight i took from calcutta to bombay just to meet them which i believe it was one of the greatest decision i've taken just to take that flight you know at times we get so lazy ki yaar kaun jayega chhod dete but i still remember that afternoon flight which i took because it was cheaper and i went there because i thought ki mil lete mil le mein kya jata hai and that actually led to closure of a deal where we came together and we launched the algo trading firm uh, we were seven partners there i was the main one of the main guys there and we got into technology led trading if we, i would have not done that i would have stayed with my manual trading exercise and i don't know what the result would have been we still have the, that firm but the technology firm which is making much more money with lesser capital in market because of the technology so that's that's one thing uh, the other thing is that when you know i was getting slightly uh, disillusioned from financial market in 2013 i was figuring out ki kuch aur karte hain let me just try to add some value they are you know going through that journey of uh, almost 8 to 9 months where you're trying to figure out what to do 
where you are doing all kind of stuff, meditation, uh, you know, uh, pranam and all those things, because you know that this is not you are doing which you are liking. Kuch to karna padega. And then you finally get that aha moment by reading a book. Ki, oh God, I didn't think about it. Yeah, ye karte hai na, ye sabse hai. So those are, you know, these are some of the things. And finally one, social media. Uh, you know, I, I focused on social media uh, largely during the COVID time. When I, I saw that there is a crazy world out there where people are paying all kind of money to influencers to push their product. And yeah. so either you need to be extremely well capitalized to burn that kind of a money by paying to heavy influencers, which we were not because the mindset was more of a bootstrap enterprise. We got just funded. So probably now we will be getting into that zone as well. So I thought that the best way to compensate that non-availability of hyper funded cash was to become an influencer myself. And I thought I may have that skill, so why don't I try? So the camera was there, I made it, I gave it a shot and it worked out well. People liked the video and I got a decent following in social media. So the point is that at every stage, yes, there, there will be crisis, there will be questions asked by yourself as well as by others. But then if you are cool and calm and if you understand your strength, then building onto that strength is not a challenge. It's just that people, uh, they leave halfway. One should not leave it. Absolutely. So I, I learned three things from you. That one is that uh, find great people and go the extra mile to meet them and see how you can work together with them. Uh, you know, when you are down and out, don't stop reading books. Keep reading books. You never know when you will come across some very interesting idea and you will change yes. your path of your life. The third point that I understood and uh, learned from you uh, was that, you know, uh, when, when a particular media becomes too expensive, you become the media. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So, 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 tell me, like, I, I see a lot of people again, you know, a lot of young entrepreneurs I, I, I come across, I meet, you know, kind of they are doing all the three, right? They are already going and meeting people in networking events. Uh, you know, uh, they are also, uh, you know, writing a lot on social media. Facebook, uh, and they, they are doing all these things, right? But still, they are not finding a way out. They are not able to break, uh, you know, the, the limited, uh, you know, uh, the limited. Uh, uh, how, how how do I put the right word here? You know uh, the constraints and come out of it to build a successful business. What they might be doing wrong? I mean, you must have also seen a lot of people. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, struggling and you know working hard. They, they are great guys, but they are not able to come out of it to become uh, successful entrepreneurs. What might be what they might be doing wrong? Oh, yeah, Vishak, maybe they are trying too hard and yeah. you know communicating what probably they want to communicate and not communicating what people are willing to listen and i think uh, being a people's person has become so important because technology has taken away that emotion part from all of us so very few people you will see look at their expressions and you'll feel like hey, what had happened to this guy why isn't he smiling <laughs> technology has taken away that smile from our face so Right. the moment you see someone smiling you start feeling good about it yeah. so i think one should keep a smiling face and always be open to meet people that that will give such a strong impetus to your personality uh, that people will automatically try to be with you and the mm -hmm. moment people are around you good people are around you uh, then i think business will succeed if, if there is market for that and Vivek, you have uh, you have found great people, struck great partnerships, right? And 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 made them work, right? What is the secret behind that? Like, how do you make? How do you? I mean, I would call you a deal maker. So, how do you give us a couple of deal making tips that we can use to make great deals and you know with the right people and move ahead in our life? I think it's 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 just like a marriage. You know, always think from her perspective and be ready to compromise. Uh, that's that's the key. So, from as I said, I'm a people's person. So. First thing when I am talking about something which is serious to be discussed with that person, then mm -hmm. I always think from his perspective or her perspective that if I was him, well, what would I expect? And then I, I give that verdict that I think you should expect this from me. And that person becomes so excited that, oh my God, exactly what I was thinking. How did you come to know about it? Because I'm thinking from your perspective. And then obviously you can then get into a round of negotiation and say that, listen, uh, I know what you want. But you know, today I can only give this much to you. Give me some time. I will take you to that level. And the person instantly becomes comfortable with you that yes, yes, sir is, sir has that sense of knowing me. So I'm sure the person will take me to that next level. 
So Vivek, what's next? Uh, are you also coming up with a trading platform like Zerodha, or you are going to bring some amazing, uh, some some more, uh, you know, path-breaking tools that will, in fact, tell me that which share to invest in? Yeah. So you know, Abhishek, uh, we always had this uh, two thought that why why can't we become Zerodha? And there is one Zerodha needed from Eastern India to create that ripple in the market. But when I introspected myself that am I a broker? Do I have the character of being a broker? Because being a broker, you need to be ruthless. Uh, you you will see ten out of nine clients, uh, nine out of ten clients losing money. And at the end of the day, when you feel emotionally attached to a client, that oh my God, these guys are losing money, then you can't become a broker. You have to be ruthless. You have to square up their trades if they are losing money. If your stop losses get hit, so as a person, I'm not that kind of a person. As a person, I'm a person who loves to add value. Okay. Uh, I'm not a techy techy. I'm a guy who's from market, so I loves to add value. And I'm seeing that the broking uh, ecosystem is now flushed with lot of uh, capital, and there are new guys emerging who are doing such a phenomenal work. Especially guys from Bangalore, like Zerodha is there, Grow is there, Upstock is there. Now we have one more coming, and there will be more and more brokers coming, uh, and the the broking revenue will go down. Probably someone will come out with that disruptive thought and keep the broker at zero. So where do I make money? I, mean, I do burn money, and uh, for that I need that access of continuous pool of VC money, which which at this moment I don't have, uh, or maybe I have not aspired to take. Maybe in future I will take. So I thought that that seven crore investor will become fifteen crore in couple of years. It will become thirty crore in lot many years, and all these guys cannot make money just by looking at Zerodha terminal, right? Because Zerodha terminal will give you blue and red lights. How do you make money out of that? So you will come to me and ask me that, okay, Vivek, I have the login. Please tell me how to make money from this thing. So we will become that layer uh, on top of all these discount brokers. And you know, this is what exactly traditional brokers were doing. Open an account. We will give you research. We will give you ideas. So what we will do is help you get into that decision making. And we will sit on top of all the brokers. So our platforms will be integrated with brokers. Uh, so if you are a Zerodha client, you can trade through our platform itself, no additional cost. So you won't mind, but we will generate those kind of algorithms which will help you to trade the market or invest in the market or whatever you are doing. If you are a Motilal Oswal broker, we will integrate. If you are a Kotak broker, anyways Kotak is now invested in us, so we will integrate. So we will become that parallel ecosystem in the industry, and we don't want to be a broker because that needs a different kind of a bandwidth which. We think we are good in doing the value additions. So, Vivek, you have mentioned twice about funding and VC now. So, I'll ask you: you since uh, you recently uh, raised two rounds of funding, I believe, in total. Yeah. Uh, what has been your experience of running a business like a bootstrapped entrepreneur and running a business which is funded by an external investor? Of course, they are heavyweight names who have funded you. Yeah. Uh, would like to get to understand that what you have to change in yourself in when you move from a bootstrapped entrepreneur to a, a funded entrepreneur. So I think, uh, Abhishek, what we have, what the investor which we got are the users of our product. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramesh Damani, Dinesh Agarwal, Ajay Sharma, all these guys use our product and they love what we are doing. So they said that maybe we just want to chip in because we are doing good work. Okay. Kotak is technically also user of our product and they love what we are doing and they need us to help them in building their broking business. And we also need them to integrate with our transaction platform. So, uh, you see, we have not gone into a fundraising mode technically. Right. You know, it's like people who like us, they have given us money and we are using that money to build our product. In fact, we got first money in July 2018 from Ramesh Ji and Dinesh Ji. And they, we raised around three and a half crore. And till date quota came, we had three and a half crore as a bank balance. So we actually didn't use that money. Why? Because we are continuously revenue focused, product development is happening and we're making sure that the revenue is there so that tomorrow if anything happens in this ecosystem, we are sustaining that business because we are 150, 200 people organization, right? So that was the mindset. But when quota came and we thought that let's press the growth trigger now and get them on board, get heavy money now and prepare ourselves for the next growth plan. So next round which will be probably a series a or something there we definitely intend to raise heavy capital and the mindset of 
a bootstrap traditional revenue entrepreneur will need to be changed to a more aggressive growth oriented entrepreneur this phase right now from the day kotak invested to probably the next round this is a phase where we are changing our mindset and you know friends like you uh, who are helping us to understand this whole science behind it and i'm sure we will change our mindset because we are onboarding a lot of talent who have been there done that and who are helping us to get into that growth trajectory to raise aggressive money from the market so uh, again have you thought i mean that I, i was speaking to a very interesting business leader some time back and uh, uh, during my conversation with him he was telling that abhishek if you can't cannibalize your business someone else will kill your business uh, so you as a businessman need to continuously cannibalize your business to build the next version of your business and that has this one thought has stayed back with me and uh, i would like to kind of throw this thought to you with the vivek to understand get your uh, your uh, thoughts on this do you really think that you need to cannibalize your business this means you have to find ways how a competitor will come and kill your business and you rather get to that path to create your next product which basically takes off from where this product ends so abhishek when we uh, when we started uh, financial education was not in in uh, you know fancy people used to say that why do i need to learn financial market i am already an expert in india almost every one of us are expert in financial markets uh, but we thought that yes we should do it uh, and it took us 6 to 7 years to establish ourselves that we are a decent platform to learn financial market but when we when we see that whether this will get disrupted or cannibalized i say that yes it will be because youtube is a much bigger platform when you want to learn anything Yeah. and we we probably can uh, can uh, charge people for experiences uh, like certification like uh, experience of practicing what you are doing where youtube is just video so we can do that but finally we see that the value creation will not happen from education because it will become a commodity over a period of time that is the reason we moved on to add data and analytics as part of the offering because the user who is coming to us to learn now would need an access to data analytics so i think forward integration is something which works well in financial market rather than cannibalization because yes your old products will see competitions and you will have to move on to add new products in that ecosystem to beat that competition so uh, how how do you how do you think critically to create the next set of competitive advantage for your business is do you use a particular uh, method or uh, you you put a particular framework how do you think about it because i think the most important job uh, for entrepreneurs all of us is basically making choices right and to make choices we need to think deeply and critically uh, around few choices we don't have huge, huge number of choices at times we have few choices and we have to choose wisely and that is the difference between success and failure right so how do you what is your framework to make such decisions and how do you think critically uh i think you have hit the nail on the head the biggest problem with an entrepreneur like us at this stage where you have so many ways to go i can take any any path i can become a broker i can do this i can do that and the 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 problem of decision of saying no to a path is the biggest problem and uh, that is what we are facing right now that what is the thing which we believe is a highest probability of taking us to the right path whatever we have done is a great bootstrap business fine we have reached here we are happy about what we have done but from here to become that i don't know unicorn or whatever term you want what path will take us there i think we still are in a stage of evaluating multiple paths and then finally taking that final path yes there is a framework which is evolving uh, you know no framework remains what i have seen with my experience and obviously we are taking more help from advisors now that no framework remains uh, valid uh, over a period of 2 years so we have to continuously evolve current framework we are trying to put some scientific framework to figure out that right path for ourselves so i don't have right answer to your question because mm. what we have done earlier i don't know whether that has been a right thing because probably we would have done something better with a better framework but in future yes now we are preparing ourselves for a with a better framework with some advisors on board wonderful week so again there is no right and wrong answer for this so it was just an open question to you yeah. uh, no, no judgment there so uh, so going forward we wait last question from my side and then i will open up the the stage for anyone who wants to ask their question so you can start posting your questions on uh, on on the chat 
and then I will let you come and ask this question with Vivek. Anything that you would like to ask. Uh, so Vivek, if I ask you to paint the picture of this world ten years hence, obviously driven by technology, driven by new wave of entrepreneurship, how would you paint this picture? And one one small uh, you know uh, problem here. You cannot talk about stock markets anymore. Okay. Yeah. So how this world will look like, right? In ten years from now, because of the invasion of technology and new business models, uh, how do you feel? Like I mean, you can just speak from your heart. I mean, would love to understand what uh, what comes to your mind. So you know, I was talking about this with my wife few days ago, okay. and I uh, I got a dream, okay. and I in that dream I I it was quite a scary dream because I saw that I am living in a virtual world. Where literally I'm doing everything in that virtual world, but in a very different manner. Mm-hmm. And um, and when I see my kids right now, they are probably living that life uh, where they need internet. If the internet is down, uh, I I get calls uh, all the time that it's still not on. It's still not on because it's such an important part of our lifestyle. So we will we will become extremely virtual. And uh, the real challenge will be, as you always say, that the real challenge will be, or the differentiator will be, people who will be able to manage their EQ, uh, which, which I think uh, all of us are trying to inculcate in our habitat now. Uh, so the world is going to be virtual, and uh, it's going to be much more magnanimous, uh, much fearless, faster, and uh, I think uh, we'll have very high expectation because. Uh, one of the major thing which will happen in the world is interest rates will go to zero in 10 years down the line okay the value of money will be absolutely negligible so the moment you have easy availability of capital you can assume that what kind of consumption speed all of us will get into which will satisfy our need for that extent but then the there will be exponential growth of need that we want this also we want this also we want this also and and I think that will lead to a lot of unrest, a lot of discontent in our mind that we will not be satisfied with what we have. So people who will have solid background of arts, uh, music, skill set, they will really differentiate, they will really stand out from people who are very, very logical and mathematical oriented. So I, I sorry, I may sound ex- uh, slightly... Uh, that's, that, that's the objective, Vivek. You don't need to be sorry. I mean, that's the objective. I want to hear and understand how do you see the world 10 years from now. My, and I, and I, I think I, I agree with some of your thoughts. And it's going to be very interesting and uh, very, uh, very well articulated that the money of val- the value of money is moving towards zero. Mm. Uh, and then the big question comes then that what will be valued at that time? Mm. So what I understand from you is that your, your personal skills, your, uh, your, your emotional value would be much, much more valued your, your emotional quotient would be much more valued at that point in time yes yes so so there's a question i think uh, subhav agarwal i think he has got straight down to business he has found a a famous you know uh, a guy on the on the screen so he's asking what's your suggestion on nika's ipo so he is absolutely down to business right he is absolutely no nonsense very straightforward he wants to get his you know value out of this this show today so uh, obviously uh, since it is relayed live, I can't talk negative about this IPO because then people will say that you are the outlier. There are 99.9% everyone is talking good about this IPO, especially uh, the women part of our society who loves this product. Okay, uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great story. I think people are not realizing what these companies are here to do. Uh, a combination of online and offline and such a strong integrated ecosystem which they have created i think uh, we are in for really great time so uh, just like zomato there is no reason why people should sell zomato because these are not uh, normal companies these are binary companies so they will change the way we look at things they will change the way we consume things and as i said uh, if you are moving to that if you believe that in 10 years interest rates is going towards zero then all these platforms which are facilitating consumption will do phenomenally well. You can't imagine the scale these guys and Amazon has already proved it with his 25, 30 years of existence that what it can do after 25 years. So Nika is or any of these platforms can give so much return that we can't imagine. But 
you need you can't look at the prices of these stocks uh, i mean these are expensive no doubt about it and they will remain expensive forever but you need to have a very strong heart to hold on to these companies so it's not a value say, story so when you say binary it can also go to zero the value can also go to zero absolutely so you need to have that mindset that लग लगा देते हैं इट्स लाइक कुछ हो गया तो अच्छा है नहीं तो ठीक है जीरो हो गया हो गया अभी अभी एक आज चलिए सो देर आर वैल्यू स्टोरीज इन स्टॉक मार्केट देर आर ग्रोथ स्टोरीज देर आर सिक्लिकल स्टोरीज एंड देर आर मोमेंटम स्टोरीज ऑल दीज प्लेटफॉर्म स्टोरीज आर ग्रोथ स्टोरीज एंड यू कान लुक एट ग्रोथ फ्रॉम फोर ईयर फाइव ईयर परस्पेक्टिव इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लुक एट इंडिया फ्रॉम फिफ्टी ईयर परस्पेक्टिव देन ऑब्वियसली दीज स्टोरीज हैव टू बी सीन there could be disruption as i am saying there could be negativity uh, suddenly the business can vanish possible everything is possible but it's about probability that someone who has built this kind of a franchise and look at the background mm-hmm. you know it's not just about uh, the lady it's also about mr sanjay nair right who is behind so market is giving value to this this everything the entire piece so it's expensive no doubt you may get it cheap after the ipo is out it may fall it may not fall but you can't take a decision right now that it will fall to abhi ruk jate hain it is expensive <laughs> no doubt about it absolutely great so there's another question from ravi uh, what is your view about small case small case is a great platform uh, but i think what has happened is it's it's a technologically great uh, innovation but they are not doing something new i mean this is something which was already there where brokers used to do it or individuals used to do it by creating thematic portfolio but in terms of user experience i think they have done phenomenal work so it's not small case it's about direct investing in equity yeah. right you can create your 10 stock portfolio and you can also invest in the stock on a regular basis it's like a small case so uh direct investing is great i i have always promoted that direct equity investing should be part of your portfolio not just because you are investing in equity because direct equity investing gives you such a strong understanding about businesses the current environment of business if you have not invested you will never bother to know about the environment but agar paise lage hue equity market mein then you know oh my god steel prices are going up oh my god cement is going up oh my god my it a, a, a raw material cost is going up because people cost is going up you only know these once you are there in the market so at least i would suggest 15 to 20% of individuals portfolio should be in direct equity not just for investment ideas but also for understanding of business environment in our country let me make so a question from our very own kamal agarwal uh you talk of these new age companies are disrupting uh but they are still not making profit so how will they return value to their shareholders so there are two ways uh, one get value uh one way actually this concept has to be understood you know one way is that you make profit and you distribute that profit as a dividend to the shareholders or you retain that profit and that will get reflected in stock price in future right which is the retain earning discounted over a period of time that is what we all have learned in our corporate finance book the other way is if you have created a franchise potentially you are a target candidate mm-hmm. right tomorrow if like what happened when you know flipkart was bought by uh, walmart right yeah. uh, tomorrow if some us company or some big company globally and that is what we are happening we are seeing that finally the world is becoming like this that top few companies are literally going to own lot of companies globally and eventually those 10 guys are going to lead the way politics are going to be done economic decision are going to be done i mean you can't have a decision which is against apple now you can't have a decision which is against google because they become so big now so finally all these enterprises will get bought by these big guys and because these biggies have so much cash if they need you they need you and they will give you value so this value which we are perceiving right now is not related to earning it's related to potential value which these companies will add to the buyer company and once the buyer company buys these company they obviously get lot of synergy impact when jhandu uh, jhandu uh, or zandu when zandu was bought by imami Imami got a great deal because you know Zandu they got it at a reasonable value, 
and Lundu management were also happy because they wanted to exit and they got great value. But the kind of value creation Imami did after Zandu because of their product integration to their existing distribution network was far, far bigger. That's the common theory of mergers and acquisition. So I think in India, valuation is function of mergers and acquisition these days. It's not the function of earning. So it's more on impact that they can bring to the new business that they are getting part, becoming part of. Yeah. yeah. So there's another question from Ravi. Uh, what are your top picks in EV space? I mean, I, I look at the Tata group, I think they are the most uh, most aggressive ones right now. So the entire uh, ecosystem of Tata, right from Tata Motor to Tata Power to uh, Tata LXC to TCS, that entire ecosystem is so nicely integrated. The entire group is so much focused on uh, being the leader in the EV space in India. So I think you, you should create a basket uh, on Tata group and uh, whenever these stock fall, just so start investing. In EV, you can't buy at one price uh, because they will be volatile. Somewhere someone will say something and the price will fall and then price will go up again. So you have to do con constant SIP in these companies which are part of EV. Vivek, uh, one question from my side, like um, obviously you are, uh, you know, you are one of the guiding lights in terms of startups from Kolkata. Who is, which startup in Kolkata, uh, which is growing very fast, is your favorite startup and why? I always say in this net. No, no, no. We are not a startup. We are an old company. No, <laughs> we have to talk about a startup. Yeah, a startup that you absolutely love and you think they are doing to, going to do great stuff. They are very limited startups in India, in Calcutta. But that's, uh, that's, that's the problem with our ecosystem that somehow we have not been able to nurture that startup uh, culture in our country. And I think startups like wow momo they are doing very good because they have done extremely well at all india level so you can count it on your finger that these are the probably few startups but frankly speaking calcutta still needs to go to the next level of better startups and what and what can and what can entrepreneurs in kolkata do to go to the next level and create successful businesses what do you think is missing so obviously when you meet people you must be observing certain things right which might be looking counterintuitive when you compare with the successful startups and companies you meet other where and other places. What do you think is the gap? I think the gap is uh, we are very comfortable in our comfort zone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, outside I have seen whenever and it is a great pleasure to always go to Bombay, Bangalore. There people get out of their comfort zone and do some things which are probably wacky, unusual, something which uh, which is not related to their current working, their personality, go beyond their comfort zone. In Calcutta, we have this habit of remaining in our comfort zone. I'll make it more difficult for you now. So how did you come out of your comfort zone? Because you were in a quite a decent, comfortable family business in a way because it was generational financial yeah. service business. What made you come out of your comfort zone and get into something totally uncharted? Because I don't consider myself uh, from Calcutta, I consider myself to be from Bombay. So my <laughs> mindset is always like I'm a Bombayite and I work like a Bombayite. If you, if you, you know, you have been to my office, uh, you talk to my team members, I always tell them that we have to match that capability. We can't compare ourselves with people who are not willing to grow. So mindset is all about mindset. That is what differentiate. I mean, Abhishek, you know it, eh? that it's so difficult to build that kind of a mindset in in city where people are already very comfortable so we have to think like a like you are a global player uh, i find myself to be a bombay guy so and one thing i need is uh, every month i have to go to bombay to fill up my <laughs> <laughs> uh, engine otherwise uh, that's why for last one and a half years uh, it's been a tough journey because uh, not been to bombay so the feeling of you know not not getting that kind of an energy Energy so, is what is, what I, so what I'm getting, I mean, though it's in it's in good humor, is that our colleagues in, in our colleagues, young entrepreneurs should actually make a trip to Bombay once in a month to get <laughs> uncomfortable, to get shaken up a little bit, you know. So someone basically challenges them a little bit. Yes. I think yeah, wonderful, excellent. I think uh, Vivek, uh, like all good things, this needs to come to an end. Uh, is there any other? I mean, I am I am at the end of my questions. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to share but you could not share because I didn't ask that wonderful question? Uh, please feel free to take the stage for next four or five minutes to share that. Uh, and if you don't have anything, and that's that's fine as well. 
So I, I just want to talk about two things. One is that, yeah. you know, your evolution of the business, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'll just uh, share this. Uh, I've written this today. Uh, this is a very important part, you know. You know, the identification of the edge is the process of evolution, okay? Mm -hmm. It can't, we can't pen down today that ye mera edge hai. It really evolves and you, you need to be open to evolve and get your edge. Uh, evolution of the business is result of the evolution of the entrepreneur. It, it all, I mean, we all have seen Abhishek Rungta starting from a website development business to where he has reached because he has evolved as a person. Otherwise, his business would not have evolved where it has evolved. And uh, an entrepreneur will only evolve, sorry, uh, an entrepreneur will only evolve when the desire to evolve and change happens which I think uh, is need of the hour in Calcutta, that we all should desire to change. That's that's my probably the final submission. Thanks, Vivek. It was absolutely wonderful, you know, hosting you on this uh, on this uh, session. Thank you so much for, you know, being so candid, so open and, you know, so vulnerable as well. You know, very few people are able to open up and speak at that uh, with the candidness that you have done today and really, really impressed. Uh, I would now like to hand over back to, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the Thai Secretariat, uh, uh, Saida Ji. So please, please take it up. Sir. Thank you. Wow, what a session. <laughs> it really hooked us for all this while. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Bajaj and uh, Mr. Rungta. I would now invite uh, the uh, Vice President uh, of Thai and our Honorable uh, Board Member, uh, Mr. Kamal, uh, Kamal Agarwala, and uh, he, will, he will provide the vote of thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vivek and Avishek. And you know, this is the reason I always say Hamara Bajaj. <laughs> I, I never call Vivek Bajaj, I always say Hamara Bajaj, you know. So, a lot of learnings and I hope your spouse is not listening to this session, otherwise she would know how you manipulate her to keep her happy. So, thank you so much. Uh, it, it is indeed a uh, lot of learning for us and I believe a lot of Thai young entrepreneurs would have taken a lot of learnings from today's session. And uh, Abhishek, I don't know whether you are aware of it or not. Vivek is a fitness enthusiast and he sings amazingly well. So uh, most of the time I'm able to meet Vivek because of his singing passion also. So thank you so much. We'll keep doing this. And Vivek, I want to, to take this opportunity uh, to take a commitment from you that we are going to onboard you in Thai. And you can't say no to that, you know. Because Calcutta needs you and through Thai Kolkata, as you said, Ki, you know, uh, we need to nurture a lot of uh, uh, young entrepreneurs and we need to identify startups and we have to develop this ecosystem and you have to take this responsibility with us. So come in by anything under your leadership. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thanks for Thank the you. opportunity. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.